Hello everyone, glad to see you again. Welcome back to Pacific Front Channel. Here it is, the ship that we are waiting for all these years is finally here. Last Saturday, KRI Golok, the replacement of KRI Klewang, was launched in Banyuwangi. I must admit, after 10 years of waiting, she still looks cool though. So today, let's discuss it a little bit. What can we see and learn from the ceremony, analyze her capability, and what we can expect from KRI Golok? Stay tuned. Let's start with a brief history from KRI Klewang to KRI Golok. The research and development program of KRI Klewang, formerly known as the X3K concept, started in 2007. And in 2009, the Indonesian Ministry of Defense and PT Landin signed a contract to build the first prototype. Then the construction began a year later. In August 2012, the ship was launched to the sea for the first time. However, tragedy struck the newly launched ships. Just a month after she was launched, KRI Klewang was completely destroyed, following a fire that broke out during fitting out. In Indo-Defense 2014, PT Landin, in collaboration with the Swedish company SAP, introduced the redesigned ship, presented by SAP as turnkey system solution and incorporates many modifications and improvements including a raised bridge, modified wave piercing hull, and higher mast. The new ship will also incorporate sub sensors and weapon system. However, three years later, SAP left the project, and we haven't heard much about the construction progress ever since. Out of nowhere, just one week before the launch of the new ships, John Lundin, the CEO of PT Landin, shared some pictures of the ship in his social media, with a new name and new pennant number. And finally, on 21 August 2021, the launching ceremony of KRI Golok 688 was held at PT Landin Facility in Banyuwangi, attended by the Chief of Staff of the Navy, Admiral Yudo Margono. What can we see and learn from the ceremony? During his speech, Admiral Margono said that this ship will be used for development purposes. So as for right now, KRI Golok cannot be called a warship yet. Instead, she is more like a technology demonstrator to prove her design concept. If the Navy is satisfied, then they will continue the program and build another ship. Then, the design itself. I guess because SAP left the project in 2017, PT Landin didn't use the redesign concept that both company introduced in 2014. Instead, they are still using the same design as Klewa, as we can see from this picture. The last one is about her sensors and weapon systems. We can see from the ceremony that she hasn't been equipped with radar and armaments. KRI Klewang was planned to be equipped with Chinese made sensors and weapon system, including the C705 anti-ship missiles and the Type 730 close-in weapon system. Although we still don't know who's gonna supply the sensors and armaments for KRI Golok, since both PT Landin and the Navy are still silent about the matter, there is a strong possibility that we won't be using Chinese equipment anymore. SAP is rumored to be interested in supplying the sensors and weapons for the new ships, and MBDA also wants to provide the Mistral anti-aircraft missile for the air defense. It's still a rumor at this point, and we don't have the official statement yet, so please take it with a grain of salt. If the prototype meets the Navy's requirement and there is no change of plan, possibly a total of four ships of this class will be built just as previously disclosed by the former Chief of Staff of the Navy back in 2014. KRI Golok is a trimaran fast attack craft built from composite materials. According to the official site, KRI Golok employs a modern wave-piercing trimaran design. This allows the ship to cut through waves rather than rise up and over them, and the increased beam provides inherent stability. These features reduce both pitching and rolling, creating a stable weapons platform and enabling the ship to comfortably and safely maintain higher average speed in adverse condition. Furthermore, she also has stealth design characteristic and incorporates features that minimize detection by reducing radar, infrared, acoustic, and magnetic signatures. Stealth properties are further improved as there are no reverse angle bow to reflect radar signals as seen on conventional hull. KRI Golok has a length of 62.5 meters, beam of 16 meters, draft of 1.2 meters, and displacement of 245 tons. Powered with four MANV-12 1800 HP diesel engine and four MGP-550 water jets. She has a maximum speed of 28 knots, cruising speed of 16 knots, 
and range of 2,000 nautical mile. She has accommodation for 30 crew and can carry one rib. This ship is ideal for missions such as EEZ patrol, anti-piracy operation, search and rescue, and surveillance. Why choose the trimaran hull? Just like the company said on their website, a trimaran hull design is superior to mono hull and catamaran design from pitching and rolling when the ship is hit by the waves, making it stable even in rough seas. The hull is also superior at minimizing wave generation for operating at high speed, enables the ship to maintain high speed in all condition. This hull design also proved to be better in suppressing motion sickness for the crew. However, trimaran ship in general are more complicated and more expensive to build than a monohull ship with the same size. And its geometry and size makes docking more difficult than monohull and catamaran design. How about the materials? Materials used for KRI Klewang are carbon fiber, foam sandwich, resin infused, use osmosis resistant, fire resistant, vinyl ester resin. For KRI Golok, I bet they keep the basic composition but with stronger, lighter, and better fire resistant materials. I expect it's similar to the Fish class Corvette of the Swedish Navy. The benefit of using composite material is the ship has lower radar and infrared signature than conventional ones. And because it's not built using a metallic material, it has a lower magnetic signature as well. Composite materials are also very strong for their relative weight. And less weight means a higher top speed and better maneuverability. The composite material weighs roughly 50% less than the equivalent strength of steel. KRI Golok ship is also responsible for reducing the overall radar cross-section of the ships, means that it helps to reduce her detection range. But the downside is, if we are not careful when choosing the right materials, it will be dangerous to ship survivability and more importantly, crew safety. Just like what happened with KRI Klewang. Now what can we expect from KRI Golok? First, her innovative ship design and stealth capability will benefit the Indonesian Navy in terms of using and mastering the latest naval technologies. I expect new tactics and naval strategy will emerge because of her presence. Second, if this program is proved to be successful, it will trigger more and bigger indigenous naval innovation in the future. Pave the way for local shipbuilders to design and build more advanced ships. However, we can be satisfied just yet. First, she must prove her worth during testing, and we still don't know what sensors and weapons they will install on her. I hope she will get the best she can get. There you have it, a brief analysis of KRI Golok, a trimaran fast attack craft of the Indonesian Navy. What do you think of this ship? Let us know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and family, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.